Follow me on Twitter you cowards. Link in description. I am fascinated by old fan films. Like, nowadays there are great fan films coming out every week because just about everyone can make a fan film if they want. It's much cheaper than it used to be. Even stuff that costs money now is significantly cheaper and easier to acquire now. It's also easier to fund and produce fan films now. And so, fan films from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s are interesting because it required a lot of perseverance. Not that fan films aren't a lot of work now, but it was a different beast. And there's definitely a lot of charm to these older fan films. So, while looking through some of these, I came across a lost fan film. Now, I actually have done videos in the past covering Spider-Man fan films. One of my very first videos and my very first review was a review of the 1969 Don Glut Spider-Man fan film, often considered Spider-Man's first live-action appearance. I also made a video talking about Spider-Man vs. Kraven the Hunter, a lost Spider-Man fan film from the 70s. But now we fast forward to the 90s. This is the story of the Scorpion's Sting. Our story begins in 1992 at Grinnell College in Iowa, with a man named Matthew Atherton. Big fans of the superhero genre may remember him as the winning contestant on the strange reality show Who Wants to Be a Superhero from the mid-2000s, where contestants competed, dressed as superheroes of their own creation, where the winner had a Dark Horse comic series based on their character produced by Stan Lee, who also hosted the show. Yeah, 2006 was a weird time. Anyway, he competed and won as his character Feedback. But close to 15 years prior, he and some other students at Grinnell College worked together to produce a 10-minute short film for Grinnell's annual titular head film festival called Spider-Man The Origin. This movie is available to watch for free on Atherton's YouTube channel, and it's pretty much a word-for-word -word adaptation of Amazing Fantasy No. 15, Spider-Man's first appearance. I'm pretty sure every line of dialogue and piece of narration is ripped straight from the comic. It would be hard to get any more comic accurate than this. It's pretty good, well made. Obviously there wasn't much of a budget, the locations are limited because it was just whatever was at the college, and most of the actors are just students and teachers at the college. Heck, Atherton himself played Peter Parker. However, for what it is, it's very good. So. Two years after this short film played at the titular Head Film Festival in 1992, a sequel was produced for the 1994 festival called Spider-Man The Scorpion's Sting. This movie is a more creative effort, for lack of a better word. It's an adaptation of the Sting of the Scorpion, the Scorpion's first appearance in the comics, but it's not a translation of the source material like the origin was. It takes creative liberties, it has original dialogue, it's overall just a bigger production. So big that Atherton himself didn't reprise his role as Peter Parker, some other guy played him. Anyway, this was a much more involved production, a bigger cast including J. Jonah Jameson and Mac Gargan, and also much more complex special effects, including making a practical scorpion suit were needed. The movie was also much longer. Spider-Man The Origin was about 10 minutes long. Spider-Man The Scorpion Sting was at least 45 minutes long and was apparently split into two parts, with the first part being 35 minutes long. So what happened to this film? How is it lost? Well, the truth is that it isn't really lost because it was never publicly released. I can hear you asking how when it was made for a film festival. It was at least screened there, right? Wrong. The titular head film festival had a time limit of 10 minutes. Spider-Man The Origin barely hit that. Spider-Man The Scorpion Sting did not. In fact, in 1994, that time limit shrunk down to 8 minutes, so there was absolutely no way. So instead of screening the actual movie, they cut together a trailer with footage from the movie and some behind the scenes clips, snazzy music included. That was what was screened at titular head. There are no known public screenings of Spider-Man The Scorpion Sting. For all we know, The Scorpion Sting has never been seen outside of Atherton's archives. The only pieces of the movie that we can watch are the trailer on Atherton's YouTube channel, and also the first five minutes of the movie, which were also put up on his channel. That's it. 
and that clip was first put up nearly six years ago, with no updates on even the possibility of more being put up. So yeah, there's no way to watch the rest of this movie. As far as I know, there's no way to really talk to Atherton other than by commenting on his channel. Would you like to see this movie? Let me know in the comments. There's a link to Atherton's channel so you can watch Spider-Man The Origin, the trailer for Spider-Man The Scorpion Sting, and the first five minutes. So don't forget to subscribe for daily videos on the franchises you love, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.